stuff. I can't believe I just walked in here and tri put this camera on you like this. And <laughs> and stuff. But it was a, it's a once in a lifetime experience. I think you don't have many of those. I know. It was sort of magical. And then we had that great performance by Perkins and Jeff. A hell of a scene. Oh yeah, you know, Perkins only had to go to the hospital after that because Jeff hit him with the wrong, he used the wrong uh, baton to hit him with. And, and Perkins, and he really hit him. Yeah. And Perkins really screamed, but what a scene. He didn't break up. He didn't stop acting. Oh no. Is it Paul? Is it pass, Rudy? Your legs are next. Rudy, is it pass? Your father spent $11 million to raise your brother up from the skirt chasing college point to president of the United States. For 20 years, he told him what to do and how and why he was going to do it and what would happen when it was done. Your father put him in the White House. Why? Because that's where you can generate the most cash. A cold-ass business proposition like everything else in the society. <laughs> But your brother decided to stir up the population. It was John Stark who went up in the in the building and found that office. That's right. And they told him you won't get within a hundred yards of this building, and you better watch out that Joe Kennedy thing. And he yeah. went and got it anyway. That John Stark could get in anywhere. like to see done, and which I miss in the movie, is establish the flag on the building. And we've got about three or four shots. Which we could do that. That you could put in uh, with a computer generation. And I don't think it would be too expensive to do. But could you, if you ever re-released re it, if anybody could ever get Oh, I guess it means getting money for exploitation and everything, huh? Not spend a lot of prints and ads money. You know, uh, no, that movie, had, if it were to be released, it could be released even, I hate to say it, digitally. Because if anybody could talk anybody into getting a re-release, it would be either John or Fred. Ah. And, and I think of our picture, Winter Kills, in which we used everything that we knew. And that was well before computers came into it. And I think we got more soul into it. Ah! Ah! Take my hand! Stupid! You want to go with me? Take my hand, Pa! You get out of this alive, son! out of this alive. Take our money out of the Western world and put it in South America. Oh. Brazil. Ah. Ah. Brazil. There the next puts up. Ah. That's why I was thinking this would be a great movie to re-release considering the times that exist now. Because we're going through a situation which is more apropos even than then. I think. I think so too. <laughs> they will run you dizzy. They will pile falsehood on top of falsehood until you can't tell a lie from the truth and you won't even want to. That's how the powerful keep their power. Don't you read the papers? You've got to accept that there is a world outside of you and that you affect that world. Your dad knows it. My pa thinks uh, Moses lied about the Ten Commandments because what God really said was... Do Christians really didn't have a very high opinion of mankind, you know what I mean? Right. So I was wondering... Well, you're a, uh, an optimist anyway. Do you think I'm an optimist? Aren't you? I guess I must be, huh? It's my, my favorite movie. It was extraordinary. It, it was... You remember when they were closing us down and... Oh, yeah. I think the, it was the grip or the electrician or somebody 
pulled out a couple of hundred bucks and says, yeah, I'll put it up some money. I remember. We were on ladders up in the up in the and hot. They were gonna, they, the whole crew was going to put in for to continue the movie. Is it that something? Terrific. I don't know where the money came from, but I never wanted to ask. No, I well, know we used to get paid out of suitcases. Was it for money? Where did you get the ball? to suggest to me that I'd have your brother murdered for some additional cash. The president of my country. Is this an attack, son, a conspiracy? Have you gone over to the enemy? Or are you mad? For money. Shame. For shame on you. About once a week we had a big party. Yes, we did, didn't we? And you couldn't call them off. I remember once when everybody was... The picture was being shut down, and there was no money, and and uh, they, we didn't have any money. But we had the party with all the stops out. Everything happened. Mr. Wilson? Good evening. Mr. Keegan, this is a pleasant surprise. May I my key, please? Certainly. You're looking worse than I've ever seen you, sir. I've been traveling. Yeah, it certainly doesn't agree with you. Good night. Good night. I'll uh, alert the staff that you're in residence and get some sleep. You re-release it. John would get an Academy Award, and he's long gone. You'd get an Academy Award? Huh? Oh, you'd get an Academy Award. For production design? Absolutely. I don't know. No. Oh, I know you will. Honorary Oscar recipient, Robert Boyle. Once, I think we were shut down or something, and there was a party all laid down to go to some restaurant or something. And, uh, and the company was closed down, so Bess said, well, let's get a hold of, of uh, Fred, and we'll have the party here at this house. So we, and Fred was in, at home in, in uh, New Jersey. So we called Fred and he wouldn't hear of it. He's, all he wanted to do was talk about the flowers that were blooming on the hill behind his house. It was in the spring, I think. And he said the crocuses or whatever it was <laughs> are in bloom. And that's all he would talk about. And he, you couldn't talk him out of the party. <laughs> and nobody had any money. And so we had the party. Sure. Wow. We all we we all loved each other, didn't we? Oh yeah. It was a big love fest festival. It was. <laughs> yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs>